I really enjoyed watching your Kira Gerstein invite seminars. Um, I've got to say, I think they've been one of the high points of my lockdown period. Can you tell us a little bit more about the series, Kira Gerstein invites him and how it came about? Yes, with pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for for uh, watching them. Um, I always had this um, inkling that I would like to do something like that, organize um, some kind of forum or seminars. Of course, then when the pandemic came, and then this was uh, a further uh, prod to um, to try and organize something. But the idea being that, and in fact, what has happened is that we are able to gather so many people that even in conditions that weren't, um, you know, in the pandemic lockdown, uh, we would never be able to gather in one physical space because, you know, everybody has their lives and uh, interesting people and people interested in the same subject, sometimes experts in the same subject, can be very far removed geographically. And I am somewhat skeptical and cautious about the possibility of uh, streaming being a real viable alternative to live music making. But I do find that the internet really is well suited for exchange of knowledge and information. And in this sense, I find this uh, Kira Gerstein invites format allows for things to happen that wouldn't happen in the physical world and don't feel necessarily like a um, compromise. And on the other hand, I essentially, you know, the seminar series, it's something that I wanted and imagine I'd wish um, as a student or as an audience member or as, you know, participant from any walk of life, because uh, these are topics that I find that are very interest- interesting. I try to um, give it uh, a lot of variety. And it's, you know, essentially, it uh, comes from my impulse or my desire to hear a smart person talk about something that they are um passionate about so it's just a combination of these and then uh, maybe for your listeners that don't know the initiative the idea always is that there's a live session and we use the you know the webinar extension on zoom which works very well and so we really have participants in the uh, seminar room and i say participants because uh, it's a very vibrant audience and uh, and a lot of people do participate by asking questions by making uh comments and sometimes there have been uh very nice occasions when um another colleague would also say well i'd like to add something so for example when uh when robert levin was doing his uh seminar on uh, mozart concertos then andreas steyer happened to uh come into the virtual room so to say and then he said well i'd like to add something so then i we had two of them on the screen and they were mm, uh, having a nice uh in- interesting back and forth so that's something um, that this format affords that you know on a Robert Levin seminar Andreas Steyer strolls in and uh, and the audience is very mixed I think some people sometimes think oh well it's uh, uh, comes from a um, you know, music academy from uh, Kronberg Academy that supports this initiative. But uh, one doesn't have to be a professional musician at all. One, in fact, doesn't have to be a musician. And some things are a little bit more specialized. But I see a lot of uh, non-musicians weather through those bits. And then, of course, there are, there are very general um, conversations and topics about creativity and leadership and the arts and the uh, role of the arts so um, so everybody is very welcome and uh, then I do put these uh, archived seminars or discussions on my YouTube channel so for those that can't attend the uh, the live session then they can then they can 
catch up um, later. And it's been very gratifying that a lot of people uh, in various places, you know, sometimes they'll go to an orchestra and somebody from the violin section will say, oh, I'm really following these talks. There's now some piano students came in Copenhagen and said, oh, we really enjoyed that one and that one. <laughs> and a lot of uh, and a lot of non-musicians um, write and, uh, and, and, and comment that they're um, following it. And perhaps I, I want to add that um, I'm thrilled with the with the guests that that have so far agreed to take part. Pretty much everybody, almost everybody that I asked, agreed, and um, and the the list of of these uh, humans, of these intellectuals, of these artists. Um, and thinkers is is I find very humbling and and very um, uplifting because there are so many smart people, and my policy is always that the um, the guests basically get to pick the topics because I find this is the best way to bring uh, out their passion than just to say you know I admire you I find you have much to say. And uh, what do you feel like talking about uh, on a on a Wednesday afternoon? Yeah, and I just love the variety of guests that you've had on. Because I listened to the seminar with Ian Bostridge, who's talking about um, Winterizer, and you've had Brad Meldau, um, Reinhard Goebel, but also, um, like you said, people in other art forms as well, in architecture, um, jazz. You had. Simon Callow on. Um, I'm a huge ad admirer of his his work. Um, too, yeah. So too. can you tell me why you just you felt it was important to have a mix of different art forms and different guests? Was it to, I suppose, create different perspectives on art? Yeah. Well, I think um, I think you know we all seem to circle the same core of issues, you know, be it in life, be it in, uh, in the various arts. And I imagine, you know, this extends to most human uh, occupations. So I find that it's, it's uh, in that sense also, is productive and interesting to see how people approach it in, in different fields, these, let's say, core issues. And at the same time, I also feel that as as a musician and one of the coats that I wear is that of a of a teacher I think it's very important for students but then again let's say we don't have only students but for for everybody to be exposed to um to a variety of things that cross pollinate themselves so so i think this cross pollination is incredibly important and there is not a um i haven't found that one can so often make direct um connections that let's say such and such violinist saw a painting of uh, El Greco and therefore he played that phrase differently. No, you cannot trace this and it's not such a, I'd say, mercantile transaction, but this enrichment of our life experience and of our um, life appreciation and art is a part of both, I think leads to, um, to richer output that we produce be it again as conversation partners in in uh, in regular interactions or be it in music making or in art making or i guess you know or in doing in doing other types of uh, types of work so i so i find that it's very important to go deeply but also to go from 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 many angles and it's what I find stimulating you know and and it seems I'm happy uh, to see that it's that that many people seem to concur